Seahawks left Los Angeles on top of the NFC West Division following a 16-10 nail-biter win against the Rams. Once again, defense played a major role. I mean, that's been true every game for years. Here to break things down, please welcome back my Hawks own pal, former UW running back and co-host of the Barbershop Show, Terry Holloman. How are you? I'm good. Bye. We got a win. I'm feeling good. Yes. Were you a little, I was like, okay, this is sort of boring for most of the game. And then the last few minutes were... It breathtakingly did. tense. Oh my goodness, it was one of those games, like always the Seahawks start slow and it looked a little unsettling at first and then it got to the end and I needed to have a Xanax or something <laughs> because I was, yeah, it got pretty crazy. <laughs> Earl Thomas was everything yesterday. Oh my goodness, Earl Thomas is so amazing. When you see the plays that this guy makes from the beginning to the end, his motor just never stops going. As a matter of fact, yesterday I said this, this play that he made right there, yeah. it convinced me that Earl is part ninja. He if is. you see him he run is. down and karate chop a man, yeah. like to do that it just takes so much. Just imagine you're running full speed at mm -hmm. an incredibly high rate of speed, chasing another man that's running at an incredible high rate of speed, and you have the hand-eye coordination and the, the mental capacity to karate chop his arm at the right time to cause that ball to bounce out of the end zone, I think that was a play that changed the game. You're right. He, oh, it absolutely did. I think if they'd scored there, we would have lost this yes, game. Yes, absolutely. But the ball, so who knew this rule, by the way? The ball hits the pylon and bounces out, and that's a touchback. I knew that. Of course, did you know? everybody knew that, right? <laughs> I did not know that. Nobody knew that. Okay. No, I, I, I did know that. I, I, had, I had seen it happen before. Um, I just wasn't sure that that was the what they were going to call at that point because it was so close. It was, it, was so a, good. it was It was inches. And again, yeah. as we know, the game of football, just like life, is a game of inches. And we're fortunate that we have a guy like Earl to make those plays like that. He's, he's, it's not the first time he's done something like that. He did it against the Rams three years ago. Ex same absolutely. Team same he did team, it. same scenario, same situation. And unfortunately they think for he's us, a ninja for he, sure. He absolutely is a ninja. I bet you, if you slow down that tape very to the minute yeah. details, you'll see him blow some ninja dust <laughs> into we'll into Todd Gurley's <laughs> face, and he was discombobulated and threw the ball into the end zone. It was so fun. Then he had that great interception later, where yes. he practically goes into some sort of Cirque du Soleil mode, you know, he down did. the sidelines. It was just so much fun to watch him. But I think you you mentioned something really important about him. He always talks about defending every last blade of, of grass, and, and players say that sometimes, and who knows if they mean it, but he really means it, and he yes. plays that way, and it's a good example just in life. It absolutely is, and when you see, I mean, he's a guy that if you ever get a chance to see him off the football field, you'll find that he is so intense and so focused on every part of his life. Like, it seems like everything is so serious to him because it is mm -hmm. and, and like you said every blade of grass is important to him and in that particular play we got to see yesterday you got to see how important it yeah. is and if you don't protect it to the last very second I anything could happen anything could happen but he made he made just spectacular plays as did Sheldon Richardson. Oh, yes. I, I have, you know, obviously it was really exciting to get him, but he has just played his rear end off. Oh, he has. You see a guy like that and you see he's a big, giant human being. Gigantic. He's, what, 300 plus pounds. Yeah. And you see him making incredibly athletic moves like this. You think there's no way a guy that big is not only going to make an interception in a game, mm -hmm. but he's going to take a fumble recovery and look like he should be playing running back for the Seattle Seahawks. That he would was, be fun. Could we see that? I think we should. I mean, if you guys remember back to the 1980s, Refrigerator yes. Perry from the Chicago Bears, yes. I think Sheldon Richardson could do some work for the Seattle you Seahawks. Are right. We need a fridge play. I hope Pete Carroll. We need a lot of fridge plays. Yeah. If we look at the way the Seattle Seahawks offense is playing mm -hmm. right now and mm -hmm. the running back situation, mm -hmm. we need a lot of refrigerator plays. Now, is this a running back problem or an O line problem? I think it's a combination of both, an unhealthy combination of both. Yeah. We have a situation where the offensive line is still trying to come together. They've been um, the Achilles heel of this offensive uh, unit for a couple of years now and it's not getting any better because we've had some injuries on the offensive right, line right so you have that situation combined with injuries at the running back position Chris Carson I think was our best option at running back this season right. and he's done yeah um, and Eddie Lacy is a guy unfortunately I think he needs some room to operate before he gets to the line of scrimmage yeah and it just hasn't been there for him this well year. let's let's uh you know, maybe it gets better as they play more together. Who knows? Yes. So let's talk about Cliff Averill. Um, nothing on Cliff's Twitter feed, nothing that I'm aware of from the team, but Jay Glazer from Fox Sports said 
that Cliff Averill's neck injury suffered last week could be career ending, that he's experiencing numbness from his neck down to his arm. We watched him sit on the field and, and do this with his hands. So Cliff's been on this show two or three times. He is the most solid human being. It's a great um, guy. Wish him all the best. He doesn't owe us one more minute of football for no. us to love him forever, but I sure hope he's okay. I and you got to so be too. okay for the rest of your life. Absolutely. You got a long life after football. A lot of guys uh, don't, that earned in the game, you know, we've played it for so long since we were little boys, and, you know, it just becomes so much a part of who we are. But we don't realize that there's a long life after football. Right. And a lot of these guys retire by the time they're 30, or 32, or 33 years old. Can you imagine being retired? done from your employment at the age of 33. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna live till you're 80 and 90 years old. You got 60 plus years to live. So Cliff, if you're watching, man, take care of yourself. Uh, make sure you do the right thing. I know you're gonna take every piece of advice you can to do the right thing, man. And yeah. we're here for you, absolutely. He's got a family to, you know, to be yeah. with and yeah. to watch grow up and that whole thing. So prayers for him. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Huskies and Cougs. Oh, yeah. Did really well. But the Huskies, I, I guess Coach Peterson didn't talk to the ESPN team in person the way they wanted to the broadcast team the yeah. day before he offered to talk on the phone but they got salty about it yeah they were a little tender man they got their little witty bitty feelings hurt <laughs> about what coach peterson said coach peterson you know he had some interesting things and i say interesting i mean legitimate gripes you know the the uh, huskies in the pac-12 they play games now uh later in the evening the the, the huskies played at 7 45 p.m yeah. pacific time and if you think about that you got guys that are on the East Coast that never get a chance to watch it. Who's staying up till 11 or 12 o'clock to watch the Washington Huskies play if you happen to live on the East Coast? Right. And Coach Peterson said, no, you know, we're getting the short end of the stick on that. And ESPN, well, they had some interesting things to say. Like, Coach Peterson, you need to be happy that you're getting the opportunity to play on like ESPN. They're doing us a big favor. We're number four in the country. Yeah, they're not. That, they're, they're not because of anything that they've done. Right, and I, I don't right. want to feel. I don't want to feel like I'm here bad mouthing ESPN, but I am. Oh come um, on, let's do bit, it. We don't bit. have to yeah, be. Yeah. We don't have to be unbiased about this. Yeah, they don't put me on TV <laughs> on ESPN. I'm on Kid Five with New Day with Margaret. So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, but they have a legitimate gripe. You know, we have not just guys that are voting for, you know, who's going to be in the national championship mm -hmm. contention at the end of the year. You have yes. kids that are watching that may want to play football in, at the next level, and right. they're never going to get a chance to see Washington. Then, like, I, grew, I, got, I lived in Texas when I was in high school, and, you know, I hardly got a chance to see yeah. Washington play. And when I finally did, I was like, holy smokes, those are pretty cool uniforms. Those guys are out there. Mm -hmm. There's a Steve Entman, there's a Mario Bailey, there's guys that I want to be a part of that organization. Right. And on the East Coast, if you don't get a chance to see that because the games play too late at night, you don't ever get an opportunity to say, I want to be a part of that organization. That is a really good point. It has consequences, both for the playoff voting, for recruitment, for a lot of things. So I think they should kiss we'll them. I think they should kiss and make up. I ESPN, come to Washington, come to Seattle. Terry will referee and and the will. reconciliation. The kissing. It'll, the kissing. <laughs> <laughs> this I've got to see. Yeah, I'll set that up. <laughs> but we got Cougs and Hawks both in the top 10 in the AP poll. So Big time. Go us. Yeah. The Seahawks have a bye week next weekend. I don't know what we're going to do with our Sundays, so hopefully they can heal up. And the following week, they face the New York Giants. So then you'll be back, of course, and we'll talk about that. I will. Win. I'm looking forward to that it. That win. Okay, coming up, our pal and gardening wizard, Cisco Morris, is back from a tour of the Emerald, Emerald Isle. I can't say that, but I can say Ireland. We'll catch up with them after that.